This is Nebraska Farmcast from the University of Nebraska Lincoln's Center for Agricultural Profitability. I'm Ryan Evans. For the first time in history, the number of Americans 65 and older now exceeds the number of Americans 5 and under, according to census data. As the U.S. population continues to age, many rural communities are facing a lack of elder care facilities, forcing those in need of care to relocate to a larger community. Last year, the Nebraska Cooperative Development Center, or NCDC, here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, launched a six-week home care worker cooperative academy in partnership with the Northwest Cooperative Development Center in Washington State. The program aims to address the potential elder care crisis by supporting the development of local home care worker cooperatives that provide in-home care in rural communities. Cindy Holden is a cooperative development specialist with the Nebraska Cooperative Development Center, She is here now to discuss the program. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Ryan. First, can you talk more about the trends in population age in both the U.S. and here in Nebraska that led to the creation of the Home Care Worker Cooperative Academy? Sure. It shouldn't be a shock to any of us, but we're getting older as a population, as a country. The silver tsunami is starting to hit, which means the baby boomers are becoming 65. And what this has done is it's created a group of population that is older, the 65 and older are older. There's a larger group now than those that are under five. And those individuals are the highest population of individuals that need home care. Um, According to census data, it is projected that by 2060, those 65 and older will double from 49.2 million to 94.7 million. That's a lot of people. And then those 85 and older will triple from 6.4 million to 19 million. Those baby boomers are retiring at 10,000 Americans per day. That's, again, a large number of our population. In Nebraska, we're seeing similar trends. In 2010, our population 65 and older was 13.5%. According to the 2020 census, it's 16.4%. Nebraskans 65 and older outnumber those under five by 9%. So we have an older population, not just in Nebraska, but nationwide. And what is the situation like in Nebraska right now for long-term care facilities and their capacity to care for aging populations in rural communities? Well, according to the Nebraska Hospital Association, in the last five years, 35 long-term care facilities and 27 assisted living facilities have closed in Nebraska. Um, And I just read in the news the other day that more are closing. So this is an ongoing trend. Most of these facilities happen to be in rural communities or smaller communities with populations of less than 10,000 people. Um, Interestingly enough, We, the only state in the union that has more closings is Texas. So what's the labor supply picture look like in the long-term care industry right now? Well, we've looked at some national trends and the Paraprofessional Health Institute put together a report based on census data. And they, they talked about, you know, currently there's 3 million direct care workers, which are the workers that are within this industry. By 2030, which, believe it or not, is only seven years, the industry will need approximately 5 million workers. It is the fact considered the fastest growing job in the country, with the demand expected to increase by 70% over the next 20 years. It just makes sense. The population is aging, and so the need for the workers that care for that population is increasing. The jobs are fairly low wage. Um, in 2021, the average wage for a home care worker was $14.09 an hour. And if you think of Nebraska, you know we just passed a ballot initiative to raise our minimum wage to $15 an hour. So this is below what many consider a living wage. And they have few benefits. Um, most of these agencies are small. They don't provide health insurance. They don't provide retirement. You know Those benefits that we at the university kind of Take, it, take for granted, these jobs don't necessarily have. So it's kind of hard to recruit. You know, you can make more at McDonald's with benefits than you can as a home care worker. Hmm. Um, they also have an aging workforce. The median age today is 48, which is young for me, but probably older for you. In 2021, 
of the home care workers were over 45 and 12% were over 65. And they're just going to keep getting older because that's what happens. They do have a high turnover rate um, of about 75%. Because So you, you start the job. Some agencies actually report 100% turnover in a year's time. So there's no real longevity in these jobs. How can home care worker cooperatives help to address this problem then? Well, the nice thing about a home care worker cooperative is the workers on the business. So it's their entity. And by having ownership stake in a business, number one, you're less likely to leave. Um, you get to control how the business is run, how it operates, how you're paid. And it, it gives people a sense of ownership. Um, and then the, probably the most important thing the profits of the entity go back to the workers. Instead of going to a corporate parent, the workers get the profit. So they may make you know $15 an hour, but at the end of the year, they get a profit sharing check back, which you know, I, I've seen numbers all the way from you know $500 up to $5,000 a person that they may receive because it's based on the number of hours you work. And so it can increase their wages. And of course, the more profitable you are, the more you make. And it it it's really, it's a sense of ownership and a sense of community. And when we look in this rural community, specifically Arapaho, where we're working right now, the workers don't want to leave Arapaho. If they did, they would have left when, the, when their facility closed. They want to stay there. They want to work in their community. They want to care for their citizens. And this gives them the opportunity to do just that and then kind of control which citizens they can care for. Because when they work for a larger corporate entity, they, that entity decides who they care for or how they care for them. So this gives them a lot more control in how they do the job that they actually are very passionate about. So what's important to understand about worker cooperatives? One of the solutions for the closing of facilities nationwide is allowing individuals to age in place. Um, Many individuals that go into homes do go into them because there's no one to care for them at home. But if you've got a home care worker available that can come in and assist with, you know, med reminders or housework, even just being a companion um, to these people or taking them shopping or to doctor's appointments, it allows them to stay home, which in these rural communities means the residents get to stay in their community instead of having to move to a larger community. There's a trend in rural Nebraska. And if you look at it, you know, your grandparents may have lived on a farm and then when they got to such an age, they moved to town. Well, the reason they moved to town is the services they needed were in town and they didn't have to drive as far for those services. Well, these individuals don't move to town. They move to a different town to access services they need. And this is one way to keep them in their community that they love and also to provide jobs in that community for the people that care for them. And can you just walk through how the Home Care Worker Cooperative Academy prepares communities to begin this process of establishing care worker cooperatives? So what we do in the academy is we, we meet over a period of time and it could be fairly flexible. Um, last year we did it over six weeks, um, but we can adjust that as we need to, but we meet with members of the community or a group of interested individuals and we talk through, you know, what is a cooperative? You know, we talk about democracy in the workplace, you know, one member, one vote. We talk about some basic business ideals, you know, how to put together a feasibility study, a business plan. We talk about some basic marketing of how would you promote this idea and then eventually your entity. And then we talk about how do you engage your community? Because I'm not going to open a home care cooperative in your community. You're going to open it. So we talk through the process. And then once we get to the end of it, they make a decision if they want to move forward or not. And then we start the actual cooperative development process with their community. You mentioned NCDC has worked with the community of Arapaho, Nebraska, through the Home Care Worker Cooperative Academy. Can you talk more about how that process has been going for them? Yeah, we went through it with Arapaho last summer. Um, they were one of the participants in our first academy. Right now, we're um, 
in a kind of an engagement phase. Um, we met with the community in December with various stakeholders, you know, caregivers, potential clients, community leaders to kind of talk through this is what it could look like for Arapaho. So now we're putting together, you know, what kind of an organizational structure would work best? Who should our partners be? How far outside of Arapaho should we reach? You know, because it, it, we can do a geographic area. And so who could we bring into this conversation? Um, we've got a community meeting planned in June to kind of talk through, okay, this is where we are. This is what we found out. What do they want the next steps to be and start that actual organization process? And what are the entities that NCDC is really looking to work with to go through the academy? Is it leadership in uh, cities, towns, villages, or just groups of residents who live there or anyone else or all of the above? All of the above, specifically caregivers, because if a caregiver is interested in starting this type of a business or a cohort of caregivers are interested in starting this kind of a business in their community, and then they can, we can work with them of this is what your business model would look like. And then we can help give them some tools on how to engage within their community to build a conversation around, we're going to start this business. Who are the stakeholders? Who are the people that can help us get started? Um, you know, some of the conversations in Arapaho have been, you know, who could maybe provide them office space so they don't have to office out of someone's home? Who could potentially provide them with um, bookkeeping help? You know, what are the support we need and who in this community could help us with that? So it's a lot of community engagement. Great. And uh, how can a group enroll in the Academy program or find out more? Well, they can go to our website, ncdc.unl.edu, or they can just send me an email at cholden, that's H-O-U-L-D-E-N-2 at unl.edu. That's Cindy Holden, a Cooperative Development Specialist with the Nebraska Cooperative Development Center here at UNL. You can find out more about what we've been discussing here about the Nebraska Cooperative Development Center's Worker Cooperative Academy on our website at cap.unl.edu in a new article that Cindy has authored. And it's also on uh, the Nebraska Cooperative Development Center's website. Check that out again at ncdc.unl.edu. Thanks so much, Cindy. Thanks, Ryan. You have a great day. Nebraska Farmcast is a production of the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. For the latest research-based information and education resources to manage your farm or ranch operation, visit our website at cap.unl.edu. That's cap.unl.edu.